I posted that as a fucking joke. So the Bucks have gone out and shocked the NBA world. They fired their first year head coach, Adrian Griffin, only 43 games into his tenure as head coach, despite having the second best record in the Eastern Conference. And who did they replace him with but Doc Rivers? Only in the NBA could this happen. Like we thought Doc was finally done. He was moving on to that next chapter in broadcasting, but it didn't even take a full season and he's back, baby. Before we start talking about the Bucks hiring Doc Rivers, if you haven't already, make sure you leave this video a like, give us a subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on one of our videos. But like we said in the intro, the Bucks fired Adrian Griffin only 43 games into his tenure as head coach. That is tied for the third shortest head coaching tenure in NBA history. It's only beaten by Jerry Tarkanian, who lasted 20 games, and Bob Weiss, who averaged 30 games. And this is completely f shocking to me, considering they're 30 and 13. They got the second best record in the entire Eastern Conference. It's shocking on paper, and I agree. I was shocked when it happened. I was like, bro, what? But at the same time, basically the entire year we've heard about problems. Their defense has been straight trash. So given the context in the modern NBA, I could see it. But even then, when I saw the tweets come out, I was like, wait, is this real? Is this like a joke? I mean, Adrian Griffin has the fourth highest winning percentage of all time. And I get he's only coached 43 games and all the other coaches on like the shortest tenure list, like they all had either sh records or extenuating circumstances. Like Tarkanian was nine and 11. Weiss was 13 and 17. Rudy Tomjanovich, who he's tied with at 43 games, he was 24 and 19, but he had to step away due to this health. To be fired when you're winning this much? Boy, I mean, it's a huge risk. But like you said, I mean, apparently tensions between Griffin and the team had just been bubbling basically since the start of the season. I mean, we had that thing where Terry Stotts just out of no where resigned like we were all hyped to see terry and dame back together oh, we're like, loving it yeah see what they could do and then just out of nowhere terry's gone because apparently they were kind of clashing and really there have been some big problems for this team mainly on defense like the offense has been excellent that's no surprise you have dame and Giannis, it should be but the defense it's one of the worst defenses in the league and i get you got dame instead of drew that makes sense we saw dame for years we love him but you can't play a lick of defense sucks on defense malik beasley trash on defense as well so it makes sense i mean they want to win a title with this defense it's just not gonna work apparently the bucks players were not into adrian griffin's like more aggressive style it was no dragon Giannis and brooke lopez away from the basket trying to trap more force more turnovers apparently after their fourth game of the season when they gave up 130 points to the raptors the players were like yeah f this <laughs> they had a quote-unquote intervention with griffin to change his tactics and lo and behold the next game they beat the knicks and brooke lopez posts a career high nine blocks well yeah brooke lopez you gotta play him and drop coverage he ain't gonna be on the perimeter chasing dudes around so that makes sense i get that even their offense too like on paper it's really good it's second in the entire nba and offensive rating but apparently players just didn't like playing it either i mean dame has been outspoken with his frustration playing in this system bobby portis apparently called out griffin in the locker room after the bucks lost to the pacers during the in-season tournament it can be argued they're not running the dame Giannis pick and roll as much as they should i mean they're kind of getting away with it because dame and Giannis are just that good i'm gonna make a comparison that no one's gonna get but me though they're the 2019 or Oregon Ducks. Okay. Considering how much talent is on the roster, their offense should not be as clunky as it is. I've never seen Dame kind of struggle to find himself like this year. And maybe that's a new team. First time on a new team. That makes sense. But also like the amount of just random ass close games they've been in. Two the recent ones versus the Pistons. Yeah, versus the Pistons. Like Dame has kind of saved their ass multiple games that they could have lost. Like they have a great record now, but I think there was some stat about their net rating. It could be a lot worse if they didn't have Dame close the games out for them. Well, he saved him against the Kings just a couple weeks right. ago with that buzzer beater because at the end of regulation, they're up three and they decide to keep fouling the Kings. <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know. There was also the thing where Griffin has his guards crashing the glass for rebounds. I don't see how that makes any sense giving his guards are like 6'2 and 6'3, but... And can Giannis, Brooke Lopez, Bobby Portis, are, are they bad rebounders? I, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> like we said, though, firing a coach at midseason who's got such a high winning percentage, I mean, it's almost un heard of the only other example you can probably find is when the Cavs fired David Blatt in 2016 but they had Tyron Lue in-house who they clearly thought very highly of and eight years later look at him he's one of the best coaches in the entire NBA the Bucks don't have that obvious successor 
So enter Doc. <laughs> One of the funniest things about this is there was a report, maybe this was well known, but people didn't really think of it. Doc Rivers was like an advisor to Adrian <laughs> Griffin. So now there's the whole like jokes about he was purposely trying to screw him over so he could take the role. I don't know, but bring in Doc, you know, awful That's decision. Terrible. <laughs> That's a terrible idea. You Con think? Content creators like us. Okay. For the NBA hype and all that. It's an amazing decision. I love it. You know, as the guy who picked the Bucks to win the NBA championship, <laughs> I'm pissed. That but, makes sense. But, 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 on one hand, I kind of get it. Look, I think we're finally at the point where people realize, and this is mostly just people in the NBA media who hyped up Doc. He's not you that guy not the ever. Guy. He never was. Like, yes, he won the title in 08. Fine. Good for him. But he's underachieved with a mountain of talent since, and he holds the distinction of being the only coach to blow a 3-1 lead more than once, and he's done it three times. So, if you're looking for a guy mid-season, because it's not the off-season, your options aren't great. I mean, who else? Jeff Van Gundy, Mark Jackson, Nate McMillan, Kenny Atkinson. I'll tell you what, I would have rather had Kenny Atkinson. But if you're looking for a guy mid-season to like steady the ship, you know, get the chemistry going. He's great at forming a relationship with his players. You could it do could worse, worse than Doc. At the same time, the goal for the Bucks is not to steady the ship, it's to win the chip. <laughs> Bars. I mean, realistically, meme aside, it actually isn't the worst hire given the circumstances, because like Jeff Van Gundy, he always gets brought up. When's the last time that motherfucking coach? <laughs> like 2006 for the Rockets? Uh, we were probably like seven, eight yeah, years old. you can't bring him in now, middle of the season. That's not going to work. Like, Doc was still coaching last year. Whether he did a good job is another question, but he was still been coaching. He's coached a lot of playoff series. He knows the 76ers well if they match up against them. So given the situation, it honestly isn't the worst hire, but given Doc's track record, maybe it is a bad hire. I think Nate McMillan was the dude, to be honest. They should have got. I think Kenny Atkinson was the guy. He's been doing great things, apparently, in Golden State. Apparently, the Hornets wanted him, you know, a year or two back to be their head coach. He did a great job with that Nets team before Kyrie and KD came in and basically pushed him out. So I would have gone with Kenny Atkinson. Doc, it's just, ugh. the goal for them is to make a deep playoff run and ultimately win the NBA championship. The last time Doc took a team to even the conference finals, we were both in eighth grade. And you got to think their regret and firing Budenholz are bad right now. Let's not forget the reason he got fired is he couldn't make adjustments. You know, he couldn't make an adjustment to stop Jimmy in the first round from Tor them and now you bring in Doc Rivers, who is famous for not making adjustments. It's not his strength, <laughs> not at all. Also, committing for three and a half years like, I thought it'd be just the end of the season, we'll see how it goes. What the hell? That came out of nowhere. I would have said 18 months. <laughs> A season and a half. Like, we'll keep you for the rest of this season. We'll keep you for one more season. We'll see how it goes. Three and a half years is batch insane. That's crazy. You're basically committing the entire Dame Giannis era to Doc Rivers. That's a choice. The one thing I think Doc does do well for them, though, is they're going to respect him. Like, Dame and Giannis, these are veterans. They've been in the league before. They've made playoff runs. Adrian Griffin, like, he didn't have the experience to really command respect. It didn't really seem on the sideline. Like, the players really were all bought behind him. I think Doc Rivers, whether we think he sucks or not, at least the players are going to respect him. I think he at least commands respect among players. Well, I mean, did you see the clip of Griffin trying to sub out Giannis for Pat Connaughton? <laughs> Giannis goes over to the sideline, basically like says a few words to him and Griffin just folds. Yeah, like just completely folds and puts Giannis right back in the game. Like, bro, you're the head coach. I get Giannis is your superstar, but if you think it's time for him to come out and sit his ass on the bench, you get him out and sit his ass on the bench. And then there was them for the first game without Adrian Griffin, like they're all turned up, dancing around. The social media team was like <laughs> yeah. tweeting about it too, about like how the team was in such a good mood. It's like, I mean, I'm sure he wasn't a good coach, but they're making this seem like Adrian Griffin was like the worst person in the world. <laughs> right. Like, this dude must have been a dictator in the locker room. And you know he wasn't. No! I just don't get the hire of Adrian Griffin from the get-go. Like, if you're assembling like a team of stars, you need someone proven. Like, it did work with Ty Lue with the Cavs, but that's like the rare odd example. You need someone that stars are going to respect because they're going to have their own egos. Giannis has won a title. Dame has been in the playoffs. He's been in the league for a long time. They're not just going to respect like a first time head coach coming off an assistant role. So like I said earlier, I was the one who picked the Bucks to win the NBA championship. And, um, you know, Doc's got me questioning my faith a little bit. I find your lack of faith disturbing.
I'm gonna stick it out, okay. mainly just Respect because it. I really want Dame to win a championship. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm gonna stick it out. I say the Bucks still get it done, even with how good the Celtics look and how good the Sixers look and how good everyone in the West looks. I think they stick it out. They get it done in spite of Doc. <laughs> wow. Here's what's really gonna happen. They're gonna beat whoever in the first round, whatever. It's the Pacers or the Magic. They'll take them out in five. I tell you what, if it's the Pacers, they might not. <laughs> yeah, they might not. But they'll play the 76ers in the next round. They'll be feeling good. Dame will be hooping. Giannis will be doing his thing. They'll go up 3-1. No. And then Embiid and Max are gonna start eating. No. And Doc's gonna blow another 3-1 lead. It's just gonna happen. We all know it. Penciled in right now. Now, Embiid will make the conference finals because of Doc. Bro, if Joel Embiid knocks out Doc Rivers in the playoffs, <laughs> then, then I'm convinced Doc sold his soul to the devil to get that 2008 championship. I, he might have. I could see it. Well, regardless of whether it works for a championship or not, we're going to get an up close and personal look at them on Wednesday when they come to the Moda Center. <laughs> I mean, we're already hyped just to see Dane back, but just to see Doc as well coaching up, it's going to be amazing. That's the video, guys. Do you think Doc is going to work with the Bucks? I have my doubts, but I'd love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving it a like, as it really does help us out. And while you're here, why not check out some of our other videos as well? And don't forget to subscribe to Synthetic Sports.